Good afternoon. Welcome to ATCM channel. Today we are going to discuss a case of IC intracranial hemorrhage. Okay. Uh, a 73-year-old male came to ER with complaints of two episodes of vomiting and worsening uh, sensory and drowsy states. Uh, on the patient arrival in the initial 10 second assessment, patient was arousable to a verbal comment, sir, and mm -hmm. we connected the leads monitor, sir. Primary survey. Airway was patent and no signs of obstruction, no signs of uh, pooling of secretion or saliva, no gurgling, sir. Mm -hmm. And breathing aspect, respiratory rate was 20 per minute and saturation was 99%, sir. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, we put, uh, uh, there is no tracheal deviation, no added uh, chest sounds or uh, no chest retraction, sir. In auscultation, patient uh, clear only, sir. Okay. Circulation-wise, pulse rate was 62 per minute mm -hmm. and BP was 230 by 90, sir. Mm -hmm. At this point, we put two large IV cannulas and we had uh, given injection labetrol 10 mg for uh, stat dose for uh, BP control, sir, because mm -hmm. of IV. And then uh, disability was GCS was E4, V5, M6 and pupil were 2 mm and bilateral, bilateral reactive to light. And there was no any focal uh, deficit, uh, the, all the four limbs were movements, uh, no facial asymmetry or anything. And uh, next... Uh, no focal deficits? No, in general, the, all the four limbs were act actively moving and the facial symmetry was normal, sir, primary survey wise. And uh, exposure was afibrile and uh, the patient was afibrile, sir. And hypothermia was avoided by providing a blanket. Okay. Uh, right now, there's uh, this uh, adjuncts for the... Okay. Here, what are the key findings at this point now? Key finding was only the blood pressure was elevated to 230 by 90. Heart sir. rate? Heart rate was 62 per minute. Okay. This is... Uh, and the patient was uh, arousable, like on arrival, he was... Uh, kind of, uh, E4, V5, M6, sir, arousable to the commands. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, After that, uh, like in the adjuncts, we had taken the ECG. ECG was... Uh, Showing sinus bradycardia with okay. T wave inversions in one AVL and V4, V4, V4 to V5, sir. Once more repeat. Uh, T wave inversions okay. in f uh, first lead, AVL lead, and V4, V5 lead, sir. Mm. Okay. And uh, ABG was normal, uh, no acid base disorder or anything, sir. Okay. So, on, because of the patient's presentation with. Uh, High BP and okay. uh, at this point, I mean, initially you told altered sensorium, right? The history. The patient no? was drowsy, sir. That's not okay, like then you told uh, your he was arousable. Was yes, I mean, like uh, when we arrived, he was a little bit drowsy, but when we <laughs> spoke with him, he was <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, those things are not adding up properly. Uh, you now, you are saying it uh, as of now, it is a full score patient with uh, just accidental hypertension, not yes, even sir. any deficits, nothing, 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 sir. At this I, point, no people try, no, sir, nothing. nothing is there. So, in the view of uh, uh, considering IC bleed, we are sent for a CT. How can you consider IC bleed? That's a high, no? high pressure. No, this is just and to no deficits, nothing to uh, indicate towards an, anything in brain, no. Okay. Fine, no problem. Can you? It's okay. So, since BP was high and initial his presentation was altered sensory, you thought about an IC bleed. Okay. Uh, sent for the CT scan. So okay. CT brain plane. Mm -hmm. On the way to the CT brain plane, on the way back, he had um, two episodes of vomiting and mm -hmm. then he uh, worsened his. Uh, okay. So, so going back, uh, uh, you are given initially a bit flawed, no? But his complaint was initially vomiting. So, should we yes, have Yes, uh, even MSET was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, don't, don't uh, miss out on the presenting complaint of this patient yes. initially itself. Okay. So, antiemetics needs to be given. Anything else you should have done at that point? Mm -hmm. Nothing else, no? Head and elevation. Yeah. Sir. Okay. Yes. Basically, uh, I mean, whatever said and done, even though GCS you are saying is okay, initially you are putting it as drowsy. So, in a patient with a compromised GCS, anyway, you have to take measures to prevent aspiration at the end of the day. Yes. Okay. So, Head keep the patient elevation. head and elevation was needed. BP, you have given labetrolol. If at all you had given labetrolol, uh, like Every how are you going to follow it up? After 15 to 20 minutes, we need to check the blood pressure again whether it had uh, reduced. 15, 20? Exactly. 15 to 15 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Initial dose, how much you gave? 10 mg. Okay. Uh, the recommendation is to give 20, 20. Uh, but it's okay. 10 is fine. Anything you specifically uh, roll out before giving labetrolol? What is the heart rate for this patient? 62, sir. Okay. What do you usually expect? Bradycardia. Oh, is there bradycardia? Because of beta. Look, oh, because of raised ICP, yeah. patient can okay. have bradycardia. Okay. 
and easy changes can you justify some of in cerebral t waves okay so all these things are fitting towards something which is happening uh, uh, in the brain okay you have an uh, probable diffuse uh, std changes bradycardia hypertension with a uh, assumably drowsy state okay so that will be the indication to consider for the ct now hmm? okay now uh, so on the way also he had a rheumatic hmm? fine sir so, uh, again after uh, so the point <coughs> i was coming to was that if you had given lebetrol single dose is not going to make a difference yes sir so you have to see a response and how will you uh, decide on the repeated doses of lebetrol next uh, if the bp is not reducing next time we give it higher doses 10 to 20 10 Okay, so first you give if if at all you are giving ten ten minutes, not no. Uh, okay, uh, what is the expected reduction in BP or what are what are you targeting? Less than twenty five percent BP reduction. So immediately, first like hour. you are not going to expect for first hour. We are mm-hmm. targeting to reduce the BP by twenty five percent. Two. Twenty five percent of the no. Now you are telling uh, the BP is two twenty. Yes, sir. Right, and the diastolic you told was ninety. Yes, so here sir. our target is going to be a systolic reduction. Until what point are you going to reduce the sequestration? One sixty. One sixty. Okay. Okay. Fine. So you have given the first dose. You are not, uh, not seeing a reduction. You repeat a dose. Yes, okay. Sir. Of how much? Double. I mean. No. Ten. Repeat ten. Repeat ten. Okay. That can be repeated every ten minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. There is also an infusion protocol for rabetrol. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is when we see that the patient is. Uh, there is no specific guidelines for this, but if you are seeing that the patient is requiring multiple doses, one of the institutional thing which we follow is if the patient is requiring more than four to five doses of labetrol, then we usually we go for a infusion, infusion protocol. Infusion. infusion. What is the? Two of zero per minute we start, mm-hmm. and then we can apply according to that. We start with either 0.5 mm. or or one. Basically, that will account to 6 ml per hour or 12 mm. ml per hour, okay. and then hike up until we get the target. Yeah, it's usually 0.5 to 1 mg per minute. Okay, that's the dose usually start. But the, what's the problem with the labetrol? How long you can give? That's the ceiling dose for labetrol. So in 24 hours, you cannot give more than 300 mg of labetrol. Yes. Okay. So if you are starting at 30 mg per hour, the ceiling mm. dose you are going to achieve in 10 hours. So remember that. Okay, yeah. fine. Next one. So due to his uh, worsening sen- sen- sensorium after treating from the CT, we again conducted the primary surveys. Huh? Mm-hmm. During which the difference was the uh, this time the GCS was E3 V2 M5 sir, and people were sluggishly reactive now. Ten. No. Yes, sir. Ten. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So the uh, airway was patent, breathing was uh, respiratory. It was sixteen. Uh, saturation was ninety nine percent at room air, sir. Uh, pulse rate was only forty five per minute, and BP was now two sixty by one ten, sir. Oh. And uh, because uh, the BP was two sixty by one ten, we started on NTG infusion, sir, at that point. Uh. Uh-huh. And uh, disability GCS was E three V two M five. So CT is not done yet. CT was done, sir. Okay. Uh-huh. And the CT report showed that uh, intraventricular hemorrhage involving bilateral body and occipital horns of the lateral ventricle, uh-huh. communicating to the third and the fourth ventricle, sir. Uh-huh. And there is a focal hematoma in the medial aspect of right thalamus adjacent to the third ventricle. Uh-huh. Massive. Uh-huh. Massive bleed uh-huh. in the brain. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh-huh. But at this point, I don't think the airway is going to be patent. No? With all this aspiration, uh, risk, recurrent vomiting, uh, the sudden drop of five, a score of five in GCS. So this is just impeding respiratory yes, respiration. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, continue, continue. Uh, you conclude and then we will discuss. So at that time we intubated uh, in the view of the intubated so, intubation. How are you going to justify intubation with what you told till now? Sudden drop of the GCS. GCS. If you are going by an absolute score, it needs to be less than eight, no? Yes. Uh, and you are saying the airway is not compromised. So basically, uh, the airway was compromised. Okay. Fine. Pendingly, it is yeah. getting to be compromised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That since we had intubated the patient. Okay. Uh, we in the, during the intubation sequence, we used uh, propofol as the mm-hmm. pre and propofol fentanyl as the pre medication and then the propofol. Why did you choose propofol? So because uh, the patient is in uh, increased blood pressure, propofol is hypo. It will cause a. Red, Mm-hmm. So, and doctor, patient has anti uh, propofol as an anti threshold, uh, anti seizure threshold. So, it increases the threshold for seizures. In raised ICP, it is it is beneficial 
so which is why you can prefer propofol mm-hmm. uh, unlike other agents even ketamine can now be tried but it causes is a old finding that it is it causes raised icp but it was earlier contraindicated but now it can be used mm-hmm. other than that atomidate can also be used as an induction agent mm-hmm. propofol only because it increases the seizure threshold mm-hmm. i mean that can also be considered yeah and okay. medication because again patient will have raised icp so a pre medication with an opioid like fentanyl has to be given mm-hmm. one it has an anxiolytic effect second it has a very strong analgesic effect mm-hmm. also like you told regarding ketamine uh, there was something before and now we are not doing anything regarding atropin like before in icp patients they used to give atropin and atropin causes seizure Pre-medicate with atropine for raised ICP patient. No, it's not at all recommended. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, can you please? Yes, sir. Hmm. The remaining drugs for... The remaining drugs we had given uh, the muscle relaxant to a kid only. Okay. Okay. So, so basically for intubation, we have to first, since it's a raised ICP um, case, we ha- we'll have to... take in measures in order to reduce the icp or mm-hmm. rather not further worsen it mm-hmm. so in that case patient has to be adequately sedated mm-hmm. and paralyzed while we are intubating mm-hmm. but the first thing is to head and elevation yes. of 30 degrees mm-hmm. uh, as one of the measures to decreased icp and then um, complete analgesia sedation paralysis early intubation mm-hmm. and uh, then up to make make sure that even after intubation the patient remains to be in a sedated form mm-hmm. while after we put the patient on ventilator mm-hmm. and we'll have to keep a uh, check on the hemodynamic status because mm-hmm. any further decrease in the heart rate or increase in the hypertension again mm-hmm. can lead to can cause seizures mm-hmm. again uh, and can cause her uncle herniation is one of the most common cause of heart problems also our mannering should be also very gentle because actually even touching the airway can again cause the stress response and again cause increase the icp so mm-hmm. our intubation manner should be very this in general mm-hmm. and also after this thing we have to mean as much of physiological this thing uh, balance as possible starting from okay like, from yes, oxygenation yeah just to maintain a proper respiratory rate like if possible above 95 and then again our pa should be between 7.35 to 45 Then yes. there should not be any hyper or hypocardia. We maintain it between 35 to 45. Then between a normal normal ICM level, like 180 to 180, we maintain normal thermia. Thermia should also be maintained. And also, if possible, this thing. Uh, if any coagulation disorders like in raised eye and other all of these things, let also we have to correct. We probably keep a one less than 1.4 eye and other, and also a little above 75 preferably. And if you're taking for OT, probably above one lakh, we have to maintain the pedal count. Mm-hmm. Also, the question is in anemic state, less than seven HB, we have to correct that also to maintain at least above seven. Mm-hmm. So, as much as physiologically normal basin as possible, we have to maintain the patient. Then, apart from that, anti-drug measures can also be started if the patient is going into like that kind of a stage. So, we initially prefer with like around three percent saline, we can start with a high control three percent saline to maintain. The sodium above the upper limit of normal, one forty to between one forty five and one fifty like that, mm-hmm. and also if any certain acute version, we can even go for uh, mantor. Mantor the dose is point five to one gram per kilogram. Point two five to one gram. Point two five to one gram, but preferably we usually give as a bottle so one by two hundred ml. What's the mantor strength? Uh, this thing. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. One pile is going to be. Ah, uh, twenty gram. Okay. That can be given as a bottle. So over thirty minutes. Over thirty mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. And then we can, if required, like in the middle, we can give about six thousand also. We can give like, mm-hmm. but usually we give in acute emergencies. And also, continuous emergency is monitoring, and we have to look out for any acute uh, rise in BP and drop in uh, mm-hmm. heart rate. Mm-hmm. Both can again indicate Cushing's reflex. So mm-hmm. that also need to be watched for. And also, the BP target will be around between one forty to one sixty. One sixty. Let's try to maintain like that. Mm-hmm. Cerebral perfusion pressure about eighty mm hg. What is CPP? CCP. ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ 
So here, uh, Labatlol, you told initially you gave. After that, you gave uh, uh, NTG. Yeah. Any other choices of intravenous antihypertensives? Yes. ിറ്റിക്സ് and the hypertensives you have started on ntg right so you are going to titrate the ntg to get a target bp of 160 by 90 uh, definitely no dvt prophylaxis glycemic control you are going to do you are going to keep the patient head elevation anything with regards to necklines and uh, raised acp again necklines uh, are not preferred so because again it will cause uh, raised acp mm-hmm. and even that et tube mm-hmm. holder shouldn't be placed on the neck any compression of the neck veins again raises the ic Okay. Mm-hmm. Regarding PCO2 targets, PCO2 35 to 40. Why? What is the fund again? Increase increase carbon dioxide because vasodilation. Recommended currently, so we only keep try to maintain the normal rate. Again, because PCO2 has vasodilation. Has vasodilation or just current cerebral vasodilation? Okay. Now we are talking about the surgical options. So where what all patients are going to benefit from surgery? Reduce. Now what are the surgical indications in ICU? Decompress. First, AVD. Indication. Indications. Indications. Drop in. Impending. Impending. No, one does. If, if it is an intraventricular hemorrhage with hydrocephalus, that will be an indication for an EVD. EVD. Or, I mean, we've come to the specific things. If it is a cerebellar uh, bleed, more than, diameter of more than 3 cm cube mm-hmm. will be an indication. Okay, so intraventricular hemorrhage mm-hmm. with uh, obstructive hydrocephalus, this or any brainstem involvement itself. Mm-hmm. Any, any uh, significant hemorrhage with... brain stem compression will itself be an indication for surgery okay so uh, these th- these three things forms the absolute indication so options of surgery is again will depend upon one as an ebd ebd is helpful only if there is an intraventricular hemorrhage okay or else again it will help in coming down uh, bringing down the icp because we are raining out the csf right so these are this is how your ebd is going to help other thing will be a decompressive craniectomy that is where you just remove a portion of your uh, skull board so that you allow the brain to expand expand okay it's not a curative surgery of going in and, and taking out the blood yes, okay hmm. so what happened to this patient so we put in an evd sir in emergency mm-hmm. and his uh, blood pressure was maintained in range of 140 to 160 systolic blood pressure mm-hmm. sir mm-hmm. Okay. So, was this patient on any anticoagulants or antiplatelets? No, not on any anticoagulants or antiplatelets. Okay. Any so options for, if, if at all the patient is on anticoagulants, okay. what, what do you do? Uh, if the treatment for surgery, we can immediately correct it. Yeah, less than 1.4 is the target. Okay, what are you going to give? Uh, or, uh, what is PCC? Platelet component. Uh, concentrate. Mm. Platelet concentrate. Okay. Yeah. Four factor plus muscle concentrate is something which you can consider. And uh, depending upon the uh, what drug the patient was taking. So if you are taking uh, warfarin mm-hmm. accordingly. Mm-hmm. If you are taking babigatin you have a specific uh, antidote for it. If you are taking heparin you give rotamine. Rotamine. Okay. So depending upon the drug you take you have to reverse that. Any role of tranexamic acid in IC, uh, this IC bleed? again tracks three trial tracks three is trauma previously it wasn't okay uh, the, now you can give no the jury is not out mm-hmm. i mean uh, sorry basically there are some trials which are supporting the uh, role of tranexamic acid so if at all you are giving you have to give 1 gram Mm-hmm. Uh, iv stat mm-hmm. in the acute phase okay uh, uh, the the study did not show any direct impact on the hematoma expansion mm-hmm. but there is one study which proved out to have a mortality benefit mm-hmm. so there are still two school of thoughts there is no harm in giving that is established mm-hmm. there is no harm in the group which was given tranexamic acid okay anything else mm-hmm. okay right mm-hmm. thank you